back here with the author of, hold on, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism, Senator Bernie Sanders. Now, uh, just a little while ago, shortly before our rehearsal today, uh, Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema announced that she will not be seeking re-election this fall. <laughs> Obviously, a lot of people are going to miss her. Are you... How much are you going to miss her? Not at all. <laughs> Look, I, 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 Democrat, I, no, 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 no. I want to make the point. All right. Way back when, I know it seems like a century ago, but in the midst of COVID three years ago, working with the president, we passed the American Rescue Plan, which went a long way to take us out of the terrible economic downspin that we were in and help us address the pandemic. What we understood is that bill, which was really consequential, was an emergency bill, right? Economic downturn, COVID. What we said, all right, let's deal with the structural crises facing America, the housing crisis, the child care crisis, the health care crisis. We can do better for working people. We work with the president for something we call Build Back Better. We had zero Republican support. We had 48 people in the Democratic caucus prepared to transform this country on behalf of the working class of America. Two people, Cinema being one, Manchin the other, refused to support us. We couldn't pass it. So, no, I will not miss Cinema Cinema. Now, you haven't, you have not, you have not uh, stated whether you're going to uh, announce for running again. Washington Post said this, allies urge Bernie Sanders to run for re-election. We won't let him retire. <laughs> Senator Sanders. Senator Sanders, are you being held captive in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> and if so, just say, no, Stephen, I'm fine. <laughs> no, um, are you going to run? Uh, yes. no, I, I'll, <laughs> they won't let you resign. Yeah, well, okay. the well I think that there's a constitutional issue there. Uh, but we'll make that, look, you know, people in Vermont are not uh, all that excited about never-ending campaigns. So trust me, we'll make that decision at the appropriate time. Okay. Um, people, uh, a recent poll says 73% uh, of registered voters think Biden is too old to be president. You're one year older than him. Are you worried about his age? I'm worried about a lot of things. But I think the media has fixated a little bit too much on age. All right, age is... <laughs> look, age is a factor, all right? But what you want to look at is the totality of the person and what he or she accomplishes. If you look at what Biden has done, unemployment today, for the last two years, we've had unemployment under 4%, unprecedented in the last 50 years. We've created hundreds of thousands of decent paying jobs. We've finally begun to take a step forward in lowering the outrageous cost of prescription drugs uh, in this country. We're rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. We're investing in sustainable energy. Those are real achievements. So I think rather than saying, oh, he get, made another gaffe today, oh, he doesn't walk all that well, you know, compare what he has done and what he wants to do with where Trump is coming from. I think people will come out for Biden big time. State of the Union address to a joint session of Congress is, is this Thursday. Yep. We'll, be, we'll be here live afterwards making the jokes. <laughs> um, if, if, if Bernie Sanders was given the State of the Union address on Thursday, what would he say the state of our union is? God, I wish I was going to give that address. Matter of fact, now that you mention it, but... You gave it a shot. I gave it a shot. All right, this is what I would say. I would say that in the last couple of years, we have made some progress on a number of important issues. We have a long way to go. This is the greatest country on earth. This is the wealthiest nation on earth. We should not have the highest rate of childhood poverty of any major nation on earth. We should not be, we should not be the only wealthy country that doesn't guarantee health care to all people as a human right. We should not have a federal minimum wage of $7 and 25 cents an hour. We should not have, as you've just mentioned, billionaires and large corporations not paying a nickel in federal income tax. 
We should lead the world in transforming our energy system to save the planet for our kids and grandchildren. You know, those are some of the issues. But I think what the president has got to recognize is that there are a lot of people who are hurting out there. People going to the grocery store, can't afford food, can't afford to fill up their gas tanks, working incredible hours, having a hard time taking care of their kids or their parents. So we have made some progress, but the president has got to understand we have a long way to go. We have to have the courage, Stephen, and this is not easy, to take on a very powerful corporate ruling class whose greed in many ways is destroying this country. We got to take them on and create an economy for all, not the few. Uh, we're taking another break here, but when we come back, more Bernie Sanders, everybody. Stick around. Mm-hmm. 